Now we journey and we narrow into the reality of what I call dreams and visions. Dreams and vision are two common ways by which God communicates with human throughout scriptures. You must understand that everybody upon the face of the earth is supposed to have a dream. When you don't have a dream or you don't have a vision or you don't see vision, you don't see dreams, I assure you, you are there's an attack over your life. I have never seen an individual that does not dream or does not does not see vision. If you cannot see vision, you should be able to dream. If you cannot dream, I assure you, there's an attack. You need prayer. It's, forget about anything your pastor tell you. Your pastor himself is a man of dream, is a man of vision. I assure you, dreams are vision and not the least way God communicates to men. It's the, in fact, well, you can look at it as the basic way God communicates to people, but truly, dreams and vision are vital ways that God communicates to creation. Every creation dreams, every creation has vision. You must understand that if you cannot, it's a challenge. There are diverse ways that God speaks to mankind. There are diverse. Many of those ways will require high level of understanding and alignment for you to be able to gain say why because most times you are active in the body you are active in your soul but dreams dreams a lot of time dreams happens when a man is sleeping and when you are at the state of rest god begin to communicate to you and that means that even no matter how carnal you are you can come to a point where you are actually at a state of rest at that state of rest god can still communicate to his intention god can still speak to unto his counsel and that is why every individual should be able to have a dream or have a vision because a lot of time dreams are the way that god actually communicate to you and dreams are vital ways god communicate many people have not taken their dreams serious because they felt of course the dreams is not it doesn't make any sense and many of the people that keep having dreams actually seeing the dreams come to pass but they don't take it serious and until you take your dream very serious you may not actually be continually having dreams from god and a lot of times if you don't take this dream serious you realize that your life cannot be guided by it because anything you take serious god will actually find a way to maintain that order of communication so that he can continue to speak to you because god wants to talk to you god takes more pleasure in talking to creation than creation want to talk to him so you must understand that that is why even while you are sleeping he comes to wake you up and grant unto you dreams you must understand that it is because god actually loves you and want to communicate with you that he go as far as to be able to talk to trade you must also understand that spiritual things are not always a hazard your consciousness is very important the summation of the faculties of your spirit soul and body must be aligned in order to walk in any spiritual truth and reality many people thought that spiritual things can just be a father you stumble upon them when you want to stumble upon them it's a very big fat lie anybody that walk in any spiritual thing was very deliberate was very intentional he desired it he pursued after it so he was conscious about it the substance of the things that you are hoping for can never find expression in your life until they are being transcribed from the realm of the spirit where they dwell you must understand these things that we talk about they don't dwell in the physical realm your dream will be a normal dream it will even look stupid to you until you take deliberate intention about them and begin to actually focus and align yourself in the order of god when you are aligned to god you begin to have dreams for god when you are aligned to the devil you begin to have dreams from the devil you must understand that dreams are vital ways that god guide people all through time in the scriptures you must actually forget about that mentality that many people will tell you that these things are meant for pastors and church people and prayer warriors no spiritual things are for spiritual people and spiritual people are people born again and led by the spirit of god you are born again you are led by the spirit of god you don't have to always be able to depend upon a man to always ask him what's the lord saying what when will i ask you when what is the lord saying also you don't have to be in any special level to be able to have dreams and revelation dreams and revelation one of the basic way god can talk to you you know in fact you can even backslide today and go with you talk to you through a dream and through a vision or through a vision you must understand that these things are not things of people that are in one level or the other no if you desire it, you function in it and you express it. You can you cannot talk about dream without talking about vision because both of them have to do with visualizing and actually seeing in the realm of the spirit. Dream is one of the major ways in which God communicates to us. His divine plans and his strategy. In fact, I believe that it is important actually that most times that in, in scripture God finds it much more interesting to talk to people through dreams. Take most of the write-ups of scriptures are the dreams of people, are the visions of people. What you call the Bible today is actually the visions and the dreams of people. People saw visions, people saw dreams, and today you call it the word of the Lord. Do you know that your sins are actually the word of the Lord? What you are seeing in the spirit, the visions you are having, the dreams you are having are actually the word of the Lord. It's not only your preaching. Check the scripture very well. How many times do you preach? 
how many times the people preach most of the things you see in scripture that you call the bible is the manifestation of the spirit of god they are prophetic definitions is the prophetic movement of god or others are just the visions of the lord the dreams people have the perceptions of people the intuitions of people the encounters of people and these are the things that actually you call your scripture and why do you not neglect these things at work in your life because right now we are in the new covenant we are in the third day we are actually in the day where this the spirit the father and the son that is at work in the creation there is nothing limited to the new testament believer every reality of god is made available to a believer it's just the laziness of the believer that he cannot be able to harness it so dreams are actually the bridges that connect you with the supernatural realm your dreams are a unique opportunity to hear from god while you sleep many more times many people their daily distractions are absent and they are creating a space for god to be able to speak to them at night so anytime you are sleeping you discover that the distractions that you have maybe the business that you have every day the troubles of the day your academic challenge your classroom going merely when you are sleeping those things are silent so now you are in a calm state where god can be able to pour out instruction upon you god can be able to talk to you god cannot be able to ensure that the message his communication the instructions and the things he wants you to be able to do can be communicated to you but many more times you will come and say hmm, i have a nice gym well that doesn't that doesn't look nice because if you continue to do like that and not take this thing very very serious you're going to have a challenge in the book of deuteronomy 13 1 the bible says if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dream and giving thee a sign or a wonder that lets you understand that it is actually the intentions of god that men arise having dreams and vision check all through the lives of jesus joseph check all through the life of daniel god grant these men dreams and visions in keeping to their life in keeping to a generation in keeping to a people in keeping to a nation in keeping to a tribe in keeping to a clan you must understand that your dreams are important and your vision and I realize that a few that have dared to walk upon this prophetic pathway, the few that have dared to walk upon this cosmetology, this world of the prophetic, have, have actually not been equipped right. I realize many have not enlarged their capacity. Many felt it's an astral realm of oppression. Others felt it's actually an occult realm of oppression. Others felt it's a realm of liars and fakers. It's a realm that, that is given to charlatan. And that is why the charlatan have succeeded in it. Why? Because genuine prophetic voices have no reason. If genuine voices rise in the prophetic i assure you the the them that are not genuine will be silent the solution to the fake prophetic voices is the rise of genuine voices when the genuine voices rise everybody gravitate towards them mind you the body of christ has a lot of followers everybody is a follower we follow do you understand what i'm saying and because we follow we are endangered the species because whosoever you follow will determine whatever you become and many more times in our innocence we follow men because maybe they are result maybe certain kind of manifestation and how will you know they are faking it how will you know you only know when you have enough capacity to know that they are profane you cannot know what is fake if you are not really yourself the only way you can know something that is not original is when you have the original with you if you have not touched of the original if you have not handled you cannot know what is original i realized that recently no amount of capacity is enough no matter how much capacity you have, you need to add up more capacity. Add up more capacity in knowledge, add up more capacity in prayer, add up more capacity in certain level of intelligence. Recently, my phone, my phone is 128 gig. And I realized that even without an SD card, I thought that space was enough until when I began to put things inside. And I realized that 128 gig is not enough. It still requires much more capacity, much more strength. And that's to let you understand that even if you have a terabyte space, it's not enough. A time is going to come in the upgradement, in the development in the body of Christ, you may require and you may be needing much more wisdom, much more knowledge, much more understanding to be able to have an advantage in the body of Christ. Daniel was a prophetic individual, but he was not not actually he was not an ignorant man many of you are ignorant many of you don't have a level of what i call structural impactation and that is why you behave like how this you cannot be able to perceive the voice of god you give people instruction just the way you feel why because you felt the prophetic is is a realm is, is a realm is, is a realm that is not guided by knowledge i assure you the prophetic is a realm that is guided by intelligence and knowledge so you must understand that wise men in the prophetic build more capacity they build more capacity praying they build more capacity studying they build more capacity knowing and and learning 
and in the prophetic you have to continue to learn as you learn you will learn how it works you learn how it doesn't work and the bible speaking said if you fail in the days of battle it's because your strength is small it's because your capacity is strong is, is small that's to let you understand that many people are going to actually fail in the days of battle because their strength and their capacity is, is small in keeping to their knowledge in the prophetic if you try to add more files to your phone and you tell you that no memory space that's the same way that it happens a lot of times you must actually understand that your life sometimes the reason why you cannot function in god is because you have what i call low memory space and that low memory space is your limitation in god it's not because god is limited but you as an individual prophetically you are limited to be able to understand god a lot of times god find it very very challenging to work with people that cannot understand him because God needs to be understand. Your little level of understanding grants you encounters which now reveal him to you. But without that level of understanding, there cannot be a foundation for him to build that superstructure who he is upon you. When we, when we talk about vision, when we hear the word vision, it sounds so spiritual to us that we feel that, well, it's only for a selected few who are very highly spiritual. But that's not so. I believe that vision is just a normal manifestation of the prophetic. A lot of time you have a lot of vision you don't just even know because you are not conscious about it because you just could not discern how many of you have actually been you were just praying and suddenly you saw flashes of light you were praying sometimes and they are not angels sometimes they are visions because those scenarios of event that comes to you like your thoughts like your thinking like your patterns like 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 your imagination they are not imagination they are visions just that like you call them imagination so they remain imagination when you call them vision they will become visions you must understand that a lot of time you have been to place ah, as if i have been here before as if i have seen this before as if we have talked this before as if i have been here as if this thing that this thing i'm saying right now this thing i'm seeing right now it's not just now the truth is this your eyes have seen it you have seen it in scenery of events. You have actually entered into the reality before you are right now. So you must understand that this the realm of vision is the realm of visualization. Is the ability of God to be able to show you a thing that is before, that is to come, that is now. You must understand that in the realm of the spirit, transactions are going on. There are mental that are going on beyond your level of understanding. So you must understand that a lot of time, God can actually open your eyes to be able to see what he's doing. God is always doing something and God is always saying something and if God is doing something some people need to be willing and desperate enough to be able to to see what God is doing if God is saying something certain people need to be desperate enough to be able to hear what God is saying those desperate people are the ones that have the visions and the dream a lot of time if you focus so much on the Lord you will discover that your thoughts are changing your imagination are changing your thinking patterns are changing your intuition and perception are changing because Vision is your ability, is the ability of your spiritual eyes to see into the realm higher than the natural. Mostly times you are awake when you have a vision. A lot of times in a dream you may be asleep, but in a vision you may be awake. You are fully awake and you are having a vision. So you must understand that knowing them alone may not help you if you don't actually open yourself to this reality and engage them. Everyone you see today function anything, never just stumble upon it. You must be actually be able to be able to engage it. So the next time when you are praying, expect God to give you a vision. Expect God to give you a dream when you want to sleep. Expect God to give you a revelation. He will. He will. Because you don't expect it as such, you don't see it. So you, you understand what I'm saying? So it's very important for us to be able to understand that your expectation creates a level of manifestation. I can go for a meeting and suddenly... I just begin to expect. My expectation makes me begin to see. My expectation actually cause heaven to focus their gaze towards me. I don't know how this thing works, but I need to understand. The Bible speaking said, hmm, that except a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible speaking said in the book of John 3, when Jesus Christ was speaking with Nicodemus, there was something very profound that he said. He told Nicodemus that except a man is born again, he cannot see in the kingdom of God. When you go further, you see that Jesus began to talk about how that except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Well, that is to let you understand that Seeing in the kingdom is a basic requirement. A man does not even have to enter the kingdom for him to be able to see in the kingdom. What I mean by that is this, that whether you are not even born of the spirit, I assure you, 
eh, you can be able to see in the kingdom you must understand that when a man is born again automatically he can begin to see in the kingdom he doesn't even need, really need to actually be born of the spirit for him to be, be able to be seen in the kingdom because when you are born of the spirit now you have entered into the kingdom now you have even entered into the kingdom so jesus was trying to let him was that basic ability for a man to just be able to see is for him to recognize that now he's born again now he can be able to see the realities of the kingdom what i mean by this is simple that you must be able to understand that seeing in the kingdom is, is, is part of your lot and portion that god has already opened your eye to be able to see that you don't need a special prophet to open your eye what you need may be activation right which actually the word spoken to you right now is the activation the the you believing is the activation impactation goes beyond those, those falling under the anointing you must have the understanding to engage this thing and that consciousness is also very very important so you must understand that in the kingdom your ability to be able to see is just being born again and now i believe all of you are born again so but do you believe that you can be able to see in the kingdom if you don't believe you can't see in the kingdom you will not see so a certain man is born he can't see until when you are born of matter spirit you can be able to take about now you are born again even if you are not born of the spirit no problem you can see if you set your gaze towards the lord you will see what the lord is saying you actually be able to perceive what the lord is doing and that perception will grant you understanding of whatsoever that is going on in the spirit so how many of you have had perceptions and intuitions you have perceived a lot of things why because you must understand that your level of discernment is what guarantee your perception and the reason why you cannot be able to discern is because you cannot actually align to the spirit of god the spirit of god is the spirit of discernment the word of the lord gives you discernment via the spirit of the lord the only way a man can be able to discern is have an accurate understanding of the word of god and aligning with the spirit of the lord and that is the reason why you need to be born again being born again align you to the spirit of god align you to god and align you to the word of god then you cannot be able to see Entering the kingdom will grant you much more access by being born of the spirit. But I assure you, there is a competence of the spirit that comes upon a man's life that gives him guidance immediately when he's born again. And that is enough for you to see in the kingdom. And that is what many people can be able to live and die for for all the many years simply because they cannot be able to see certain sort of reality. The reason why you believe right now that there is eternal life, the reason why you believe there is one heaven is because there is a vision you are having many of you are haunted by visions of the night many of you are seeing many things in the kingdom that is why you believe that one day even after you die you will go to heaven what 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 makes you believe that there is a heaven somewhere what makes you believe that there is god somewhere what have you seen god how many times have you seen god in the physical how many times have you seen father abraham i need to understand that these scriptures we believe we believe them via the eye business of visions because the substance of the reality forms impression upon you through convictions these convictions comes as persuasions as imaginations you can study the scriptures so much i begin to imagine the workings of the scriptures you imagine the children of israel you imagine jesus christ in his time you ima- and these things these imaginations these things form a mindset a systems a belief pattern a a, a culture in you that grant unto you convictions and form your belief patterns and systems and this become the guidance for your own encounters this now become the tool for your own discernment to not be able to discern the voice of god via the mouth of men via the word of the lord and via the spirit also well in the realms of visions there are about three mainly types of visions well there are many others but i believe these three main ones are okay there are open visions an open vision is a vision when the natural and the spiritual realities are merged and you can now relate to both realms at the same time an open vision happens when you can both see a spiritual reality at the same time the natural environment that is to say all your physical senses are active for example when you see an angel with a sword standing over a city while you can still see a car moving around people you can see people buying and selling such kinds of an experience is referred to as an open vision if you read the book of Acts, the apostles you saw actually when paul when peter when peter the apostle was in prison after james had been killed an angel of the lord appeared to him in the prison and took him through the gate until he was out of out on the street you see now you must have to understand that peter didn't even know it was a real it was some this thing was real at first he thought it was a dream this is because it was actually an open vision 
and there are a lot of times that's what we call close vision a close vision the only difference between a close vision and an open vision is that on this core in 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 a close vision all of your senses are closed or i can, I can, I can say they are inactive because doing such kind of vision or an experience you realize that you don't have a full understanding of it when you are having a close vision you will totally be disconnected from the physical reality most times you can relate with the spiritual reality just alone sometimes you see through scripture how that there are a lot of people that they will tell you they were caught up in the spirit well this may not totally be spirit transport but this may be actually an open vision a, a close vision and sometimes people refer to close vision as trans i prefer to even refer to it as trans because the vision that peter had why he was summoned to actually go to the house of cornelius in the book of Acts chapter 9 Acts chapter 10 from 9 to 16 was actually what we call a close vision because in this kind of a vision he was he was not conscious of the the reality that was going on around him he was just conscious about the spiritual reality and at that time his understanding was not actually defined for him so you must always also understand that is that expression of a a most time you can be in a meeting and you are actually having a close vision okay you may not be aware that you are in the meeting but you can actually be seeing something outside of the meeting and you cannot be aware of the meeting but in the situation where you are in a meeting and you are aware of the meeting going on and you can literally actually your eyes is open and you are seeing the things around that's an open vision and you are seeing that reality there's also what is called an inner vision this type of vision is what we neglect a lot because most times it is not it's it's most times it's not too more common a vision a lot of times we feel it's just our imagination but our imagination all the time are what we call inner vision these inner visions are visions of images or imprinted upon our heart a lot of time you discover that the lenses upon your mind are enlightened and you begin to have imaginations this imagination go beyond just your normal thinking because it was not what you are thinking before it is more like a spiritual perceptions of an image in your mind you discover that just you are talking with someone and suddenly you not begin to have an understanding of something you just begin to think about something you may be talking here and suddenly you are not thinking about something totally different these things are coming to you as pictures as thought patterns this thing is an inner vision a lot of times we can neglect it and that was why it is believed that the prayer of Paul is very, very effective. In the book of Ephesians 1 8, he said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding should be enlightened. Because when the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, what you have is what we call inner vision. There is a vision inside of you that you cannot be able to perceive the movement of God within you. You don't have to see it, you don't have to hear of it, you just have to have a perception. A lot of times I have walked in this dimension again and again and again. The inner vision, I assure you, I don't see anything. I don't even I don't even see anything physically. I don't even uh I may not even hear anything, but there is just a perception, there is just an intuition, there is something in me that told me again and again. And many people can call it inner knowing all of those. Well, that is true, but that is also an inner vision. It's a vision within you that you know that something is right, this thing is wrong, this is that, and that guidance, that guidance can really actually lead you aright. In vision so you must understand that this is actually also part of the prophetic definition of god in keeping to your before that said the major difference between a dream and a vision is just that a dream is a visual sight that happens as a man sleeps most time dreams occur while we are asleep while vision occurs while we are awake visions are more engaged engaging and it most time involves more of your senses both your physical senses and your spiritual senses than dream many people believe that dreams occur only at night well that is good but some dreams also occur at any hour of the day or at any hour of the night and we'll look further in keeping to those kind of dreams in our subsequent lectures but i need you to understand that most dreams occur at night but many times visions occur most times in the daytime but you can also have visions at night so you must also understand the major difference as i said is just that dreams occur while you are sleeping visions occur while you are awake whether at the night time or at the daytime but you must also understand that dream require you to be at the state of rest because most time is when your body is at rest that you have dream but your spirit of course is always active to perceive the things that are going in the realm of the spirit the mechanism has been never been mysterious except if you don't take out time to find it most time dreams like all other means that god used to communicate with us me i believe is one of the easiest way that you can be able to perceive the definitions of god a lot of times our consciousness is beyond our control and our subconscious mind relate with the heavenlies 
And while God speak to us, as deep sleep fall upon us, God now put his instruction upon our heart and lock them up upon the times for their unveiling by revelation. God give us dreams because they can easily be comprehended. We must understand that dreams are important in our life if we must be able to advance in God. If you neglect dreams, I assure you, be led astray a lot of time. Many of the instructions you are looking for today, God have granted them to you through dreams. Check through the life of Joseph. The instruction he gave to Pharaoh in Egypt was instruction he got via a dream. Check most of most of the things that are bailing men out. In fact, one of the gifts that God gave Joseph was just the gift to interpret dreams. The same thing with Daniel. These are just normal prophetic experiences that anybody can neglect. But these things are vitally important.